Hey guys, what's up? It's me, the Cuban Bear, and welcome back to another video. Today, we are learning how to solve the 10 by 10 Rubik's Cube. So I must admit that this has been the most heavily requested video that I have gotten to do since I did the, um, basically the 10 by 10 Gigaminx, and that was a pretty long time ago, and now we're here, and I'm happy to finally get into it, and I'm very sorry for the wait, guys. It has been quite a journey since I have unboxed this 10 by 10 and let me just say that I have loved this puzzle since I had it I haven't magnetized it yet but I will be doing that soon um, but going into the tutorial um, there are a couple of things that I would like you to go ahead and keep in mind of the first is that I highly highly recommend the first is that I highly highly recommend that you guys go ahead and check out how to solve a 3 by 3 4 by 4 and 5 by 5 those are requirements for you to know how to solve this guy because it will involve pieces of those things a 3 by 3 because the last stage is 3 by 3 4 by 4 because this is an even layer puzzle and there is parity which I will go through in this tutorial and lastly there's 5 by 5 to understand advanced edge pairing and advanced center building and other stuff like that but without further ado I'll give you guys a quick minute to go ahead and refresh your minds on how to solve those and go ahead and click back when you're done. All right, I think that's enough time. Let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. So the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do when solving the 10 by 10 is first we're gonna scramble it. So I'll give you guys a couple of minutes to go ahead and do that. All right, I think that's enough time. Let's go ahead and get started with the actual tutorial. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna start off solving the white side. Now, because this is an even layered puzzle, because of that, it just like a four by four, it doesn't have a center that defines which center is which. And unlike an odd layer puzzle, where it tells us which center is which no matter what, the 10 by 10 doesn't have that. So when you're doing the 10 by 10, you wanna make sure that you're not making any of the sides in the incorrect order. There is a there is a correct order in which the colors are supposed to be at and if you guys don't follow that you will get parity and you will have to restart a lot of the work that you're going to be doing in this tutorial so have like an odd layer puzzle i recommend having like a three by three on standby just so you can look at it and know which color goes where but if you guys already know your color scheme then that's great you don't need that but if you don't know how the color scheme is on a rubik's cube go ahead and take out a three by three and that will help you out. First thing that we're going to do is we are going to solve for the white side. Now, uh, what I want us to do for this thing, now the basic, now the most important thing that we're going to be learning in this tutorial is center building and block building because that is essentially what we need to do in order to solve this cube. It's just a lot of center building. Let me show you what I mean on a 5x5 five five and a 6x6. Six six. So on the 5x5, five five, we have the centers right here. Now we want to look for pieces like this one and this one where we can basically create our own center pieces we can basically build a bar and then once we have the bar we can actually attach it to the white side but first we have to make a bar on the white side itself and then once that's done we can then start making other bars and continue on and so forth and that's the basic premise that I'm trying to teach you in this video is to build a bar in the center of the cube and then extend outward all the way to the edges so basically we're building the center from the middle and then to the side, to the side, to the side, to the side, just like that. Let me show you on a six by six, maybe it'll be a little more clear. So on a six by six, we actually don't have uh, a middle bar to define the which center it is. So we have to build our own. So you wanna make two bars that define the center. So you wanna make the one on the left and the one on the right. Those ones will be the center pieces, the center blocks. And so I've already made one right here. So let's go ahead and make another one. And this is basically what we're going to be doing right now on the 10 by 10. So once we have the, uh, the second middle bar, we want to go ahead and attach it to the one that we've already made. And then we're going to build from this one and this one. And that's essentially what we're going to do on the 10 by 10. We're going to make a bar, two bars in the middle. Then we're going to extend outward and extend outward until the whole inside middle part has one solid color. And that's going to be center building for the 10 by 10. So let's go ahead and, and look for the pieces that we need to find in order to build our first uh, white center. All right, so the first thing that we're going to start off with is we're going to start off by building the first bar. And so to do that, you want to go ahead and look for pieces that are in the fourth quadrant. And what I mean by that is you can see this is the corner piece. This is the first row. If you go below that, this is the second row. If you go below that again, that's the third row. And if you go below that one more time, that's the fourth row. And that's the row that we are most interested in because that's the row that's in the, the two center ones as I described before. Because these two are the two center ones, they're both gonna be in the fourth row. This is in the fourth row on this side, and it's in the fourth row on this side as well. 
So you want to focus on getting both of those. So you want to focus on building those bars first in order to start off with the white side. So let's go ahead and look for pieces that would fit into this row right here. Okay, so I see one right here. You can see that these pe these three pieces right here on the fourth row, and if I bring them down, you can see that I've already paired some of the pieces together, and you can see I've, I only need these two pieces now. Now if we look around the cube, you, could see, you guys can see that this piece and this piece are in the fourth row, so that means that they're going to go perfectly with our bar on top. And that will complete the first bar right there that we have created. And so what that's going to do right there is that that will complete the first bar of solving the 10 by 10. Now once you're done with that, I want you to make it vertical. You want to make it vertical because any moves you do at this point will not disrupt the cross or anything below. Another tip that you guys want to keep in mind of is that when you're building these centers, you want to make sure that you constantly check on the work that you've already done. So if you've already done this bar before, you want to make sure that any move that you do after this point does not disrupt this bar in any way. And if it does, you got to redo it. You got to make sure that it goes back to its original state. So with that being said, let's go ahead and go to, what do we got? Hmm. We can go ahead and make the second bar. This is the first one. So I'm going to go on this side and make another one. So I can see, I can see that these two are in the fourth quadrant, which means it's the second middle bar that we need to make. So those ones are going to be where I'm going to start off with. And I could see one, two, three, four. There's one right there, which means I can put it in right here. Just like that. And then this one can go right there. That one can go there. What else is on the fourth row? Okay, this one's on the fourth row. This one might be on the fourth row. Yes, it is. This one right here is on the fourth row. This one is on the third row, which means it wouldn't work for our case. I need one right here. Would this one work? Uh, no, because it's on the fifth row instead of the fourth. Okay, by default, one of these ones has to work. And it does. All right, so now that we build our second bar, we want to go ahead and attach it to this one. I'm going to attach it to this one right here. Just like that, and now we have created the first two bars. Now from this point on, you want to keep doing the same thing, creating a bar after bar, attaching it to the first side, and once you're done with that, we're going to go and move on to the yellow side, which will require you to know how to maneuver the pieces because now we have one side solved. So let's go ahead and solve the white piece real, white side real quick, and I'll get back to you, and we'll do the yellow side. Okay, now that we have made the first side, the white side, that is the easiest side that will be from this point on. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go and do the yellow side, which will be on the opposite side right here. So it's going to be the same thing as before, except now we have to keep in mind of the thing. What I like to do, and I recommend that you guys do this, I recommend that you build bars like this with the white on the left and the new side that you're making on the right. That way when you work in here and you do whatever you want here, it won't disrupt any of the white side because it's on this side and then you have all these sides that you can work with as free space to work. So let's go ahead and build the first bar so I can show you how to insert a bar into this side. Let's see, all right, so I see right here, this is a majority of the middle bar that's already made. Let's look for more pieces to put in there. Um, And you can see that a lot of the this solving process is just you going through the whole thing and trying to experiment which pieces goes with where. And the thing about the 10 by 10 is not hard. It's just that it takes a long time. It, there's so many pieces you have to keep an account of. But yeah, so this is the first bar. We have it right here. We're ready to insert it in. So you're wondering, how do we put it in here without messing up this white side? So what you're going to do is you're going to move that slice there. Oh, you're, you're going to move that slice there. 
you're going to perform you could see that when we did that we moved all four of these layers up you're going to do a u2 to move it on this side so we move this back down it keeps the white side and it put the bar where we wanted it to go so keep that in mind when you're building bars and now let me show you what to do when you have the second bar because you can't do the same thing twice okay so here we are at the second step we have the bar right here and we want to put it up here so you're probably wondering how do we get it up there and the most simplest way for you to do this is for you to actually put it in where it already is so you want to line them up on the exact same line bar field and you're going to move it up and you can see that we put this up so we're going to perform a U2 and by doing so we have the bar back here as well and so when we move it back down it actually puts it where it wants to go right there that's exactly how we would make a bar go in there we would first um, similar to how we build bars before if you make one on this side and you want to put the one ex on the other side as well they're both on the second layer you're gonna have to put it into this one first perform a U2 then put this one in there because that way they'll occupy the same space you can't do this because that will just put the other bar back where it wants you actually want to put it where they already are that way when you perform a U2 it can actually go down so you want to make the bars on the same side so that when you insert it into that side they won't occupy the same space anymore they can actually go into different slots I know that sounds a little bit confusing but that's the way that it works when you're doing puzzles like this so let's go ahead and finish off our yellow side using the same thing I will show you how each bar is supposed to be inserted in and yeah so let me show you how all the bars are supposed to go in okay so this is the bar right here with this bar already solved and it needs to go right here so what you would do is you do it up U2 move it back down so that's how you insert that one and now this one is the next one right here that we're going to put in so here we are again so here we are once again we have the bar right here this is the same bar that we did before it goes on this side and you would think you would think you would need to put it in here but you know you're actually going to put it on this side so that when you insert it in and do a U2 and move it down it can go on that side similar to what we did in the middle so let's go ahead and go to these two bars real quick okay then so here's the next piece that we're putting in we're putting it right here here we go it's gonna go right here alright then we're gonna do this side now alrighty here's the next piece right here that we want this bar right here we want to put right in there but we're gonna put it on this side so that they both occupy the same space just like that and now we're just gonna put in the last two on the very sides okay here's the next bar right here we're just gonna insert it in just like so now we shall complete the next piece and uh, one thing to keep in mind let's say anywhere during the process you had um, a piece that you that was up here and you wanted to move it down so you could start pairing you want to find a slot that's empty so this doesn't have yellow it has one yellow on one side let's see which one doesn't have yellow hmm this one doesn't have yellow this one has yellow up here but I, I can work with it but yeah so you want to do is you want to move it down perform an F2 and then move it back up and that will empty it out and help you put it at the bottom and then you can start making more bars and finish your process and that's how you would do it for any other piece that you want to move down that's already on the yellow side okay so here we are on the last bar of the yellow side so what we're gonna do is we're gonna move it instead of moving it in up here that's not what we want to do we might want to want to put it in from the opposite side do it up there U2 R prime so what that does now is that it solves the yellow side and the white side so both sides are now solved so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the next four centers and for this part you actually do need your 3 by 3 on hand and you wanna look at the first thing so the first thing I'm gonna start off is the green side and so what I know is that the orange has to be on the right and the red has to be on the left that's how I know the right color scheme and it's very important that you know what the right color scheme is because you do not want to get parity on a big cube it's horrible it's the worst thing that you want it's the least possible it's the least I'm it's the it's to avoid it let's do the color scheme correctly get a 3x3 three three on hand and know what the color scheme is follow along with your cube so I'm gonna do green then red and then the last two as centers so let's go ahead and learn how to do bars on these sides
So to do bars on these sides, it's pretty simple. What you're going to do is you're going to hold it now like this. You're going to hold it with the white side facing to the left and the yellow side facing to the right. And at this point, you do not ever want to change it like that. This is how you want to hold the cube at all times. No white, no yellow. You should be rotating it like this, and there should not be any white or yellow ever. This is how you're going to hold it the whole time. You're just going to be putting down things, putting them up, putting them up, putting them down, putting them down, and then putting them up. Never should there ever be a white or a yellow anywhere. So holding it like this, you're going to do the exact same thing that we did before with the white side and the yellow side. You're going to start off with, um, since I'm starting off with the green, we're going to make green bars and we're just going to insert them in as if it was the white side because right now we can just freely move slices anywhere we want. So start off by building your green side by building bars and inserting them in and I'll be right back with you on that. So you guys can see that we now we have the... So now we have the green bar done, putting it right there, and that solves the green side. So now that we have the green side solved, we want to go back to our 3x3. Three three, and we want to see that this is the green, yellow on top, white at the bottom. So then the one on the right should be orange, and the one on the left should be red. So I'm going to do the red side now. And keeping in mind that if we, let's say that... Uh, Let's say that this bar right here was the red, the red one. If you want to insert a bar now, what you have to do is you have to do this. You have to do a U2 and move it up so that we don't damage none of the green side. So it's similar to how we inserted bars on the yellow side. And you want to follow that process in order to solve for the red side. But it's the same basic principle. Now every time you pair something, let's say I'm pairing something up here. I'm building a bar up here on this side. If I want to move down a sort of red down here, then I have to look back and see... I misaligned a green, so I have to move it back. So from now on, any move that you do on this slice, you have to check to make sure that the green will be aligned back. And then after that point, you just want to keep building bars and making the red side. So I will get back to you when I'm done with the red side, and we'll move on to the last two centers, and that's a more different way. A minute on the Central Park, and I'll last on the Lampson Street. All right, then, so once we have completed the last two centers, the next thing that we're going to be focusing on is... All right, so now that we have completed the last two centers, the next thing that we're going to be focusing on is con commutators and how to use them in order to solve the last two centers right here. So let me show you on a 6x6 and a 5x5 how they work so you can better understand what they are. So on a 6x6, we have here the last two centers, orange and blue, and we, have, we want to switch the pieces. So a contour is when we switch a piece we swap pieces this piece and this piece we want to put them on the this side and this side so how we're going to do is we're going to move it down we're going to do an f prime because it was on the right side we're going to move this piece down as well we're going to we're going to reverse everything we just did so we would do an f move this piece back up then we move this piece back up and you can see that we have swapped that piece for that piece. These two pieces have been swapped. So what a commutator is, is that what it is in out a special algorithm that allows you to switch pieces, only two pieces at once. And there are more advanced techniques to learn, but for now, this is what you needed, the basic understanding in order to understand what you're doing. You can sometimes do two in a row, um, like right here, where we have two pieces, two pieces there. We will move them down, just like that. And because we did it on the left side, we need to move it this way. So it's going to be and F prime, we're going to move this down as well, move it back, move this back up, move this back, then move that back up. And you can see we have switched off the pieces with one another. These two pieces have been swapped. And that's how you want to solve for the last two centers is you want to build bars or you want to just keep swapping pieces with pieces, as you can see right there. and keep that basic premise there.
if you guys need a more if you guys need a more um if you need more if you need more of an in-depth explanation i have a video that goes deep into what commutators are and how to use them properly on bigger cubes you can go ahead and check it out in the card above but this was just a basic explanation because you guys should already know how to do this from learning how to solve a five by five and uh, any other higher puzzle but that's basically let me show you how it is on the five by five just to give it one more simplistic thing so here we have the five by five right here i want to go ahead and switch these two pieces i want to switch this piece with this piece so i would do is i would move it down just like that and then i would perform an f and then i would move this center down then i would perform an f prime move this piece back up move this f and then move this piece back up and what it has done is that it has switched properly these two pieces and so how you know whether or not to go left or right is dependent on which on which side you slice down from so if i were to let's say well, let's do one more example then so I want to switch this middle piece with this blue piece. So because I, I, I went down, I sliced down, and because I did it on the right side of the right side of this, so let's, let's say this is the middle, and this is the right and the left, and if I did it right here, this is the right side. So that means that my F needs to go in this direction. And then I would move the piece that I wanted to switch down. Then you would move it back, move it back up, perform an F prime again, because that's what we did before. You have to do it the other way now then you move it back up and then that will switch the center with the center you could see the centers have been switched and now we have another center we want to switch this one right here and this one right here so let me show you let me show you on the left side now because it was on the left side, I need to move it this way I need to move it down I need to do the opposite of what I did it's because the F went this way it needs to go this way now and then I will move it back up perform it again in order to bring this center back up and you can see all that's left is a corner. And if you're left on with a corner and a corner, you want to align them like this. Perform an R, U, R prime, and then that's just like a bar. And so in, to insert a bar like this, you would just move it up. You would not want to put it here. You want to put it on the opposite side. Do a an R, U, two, R prime. And then that will solve for the center right there. And that's the basic idea when it comes to commutators. So knowing this information, let's go ahead and look at our blue and orange side, which we have done right here. And I see a couple of things that I can do right here. I can move all three. Um, if I go right here, I can actually swap these two blue ones right here, which I'll show you because there's so many pieces I need to keep a track of. It's hard for me to tell you while I'm doing it at the same time. But I just switched these ones with these ones with these ones right here and so that's the basic premise you just want to keep switching pieces back and forth one at a time if you have to um, but yeah you just want to do a one at a time until all of the pieces have been swapped and then once you're done with that we can move on to edge pairing and how to find and how to and how to and then we can move on to how to solve for the edges on the 10 by 10 so let's go ahead and go through the commutators for all of these and then I'll meet you guys when you have it solved remember to know the difference between if you if you have to switch on this side you have to go this side after if you have to go this side if you're slicing here you got to do an F in this direction if you're slicing here you got to go F in this direction and for the middle slices it doesn't matter if it's in the very very middle it it doesn't matter which way you go because it's the middle so keep that in mind and then I'll meet you guys back and we'll be on edge pairing so I'll see you guys there let's go all right then guys so now that we are done with all of the centers now we can move on to edge pairing and how to do edge pairing on the 10 by 10 so if you guys already know how to do edge pairing on this on the other cubes you guys already know the algorithm to swap to put in pieces that you want but i'll go ahead and show you in this video right here let's say i want this piece to go in here what i would do is i would do an r u prime r prime and then it would be down there and that's how we're going to put in pieces we're not just going to put in oh there's a piece right there i'm going to put it down there you're not going to do that because what we're about to do we're about to do free slicing and what that does is that it messes up all the bars in the centers and if you do that you're going to mess up the bars so you don't want to do that you just want to do if you want to insert a piece on the right you do it like this and if you want to insert on the left you do it like this just like that either side you want to do it like that do not just put in a piece like that because that's going to mess up the entire puzzle so let's go ahead and go on to solving the edges so the first thing that we want to do is you want to solve for the white edges first and the reason is because they're the most easiest to distinguish and the most easiest to look out for so we're going to start off with the red and the white so i can see that there's a piece right here that i want to put in because there's two here already so i want to pair them together so i'm going to do an r 
u prime r prime and then I can just slice and put them right there do not worry about slicing because at the end we're gonna put them all back and as long as you follow the algorithm to put in any piece you want they won't get messed up so don't worry about them here's another one right here I'm gonna put it in And you can see that there's one right here that's actually flipped. It's actually supposed to go up here, but it's flipped. So what you would do is you would take it out by doing an R U R prime. And then you move it in on the left side. And then you can slice it in. And then that will help you to get it in. So let's see another piece. Here's one right here. I want to put it on the left on the right. Oh wait, there's actually some right here we can pair up. So we're almost done. This one right here is the one we want to put in. But it looks like this one should also go there. So I'm going to move it in. Cool. So where's the last one? There it is right there. So let's go ahead and moving it on the right side. All right, so here we have our first bar right here done. So how we're gonna insert it is we're gonna go ahead and go to this side. We're gonna insert it in by doing, let's pretend there's something here that we wanna move down here. We just move it in as if it was those ones. There, and then we've put it in. It's secured there. Now let's keep looking around for more uh, white edge pieces. The next I'm gonna work on is blue and white, but I don't think you guys need more explanation. I will give more explanation on the last four edges. So I'm gonna do all the rest of them. You wanna start off with the four white ones, then move on to the yellow ones and move them move them up here. The method that we're going to be using here is that we're going to make the white edges and we're going to move them in the white side and then we're going to do the yellow edges and move them on the yellow side so that all we're left with are the four middle edges and then that will require some more um, algorithms for you to learn for this part. But for now all we have to do is just free slice everywhere and then once we're done we will go to the last four centers, uh, last four edges. So let's go. All right. So now we're here at the last step right here. Um, your center should look like this when you're done with the yellows on top and the whites at the bottom. We've almost paired every edge together. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to align all the centers back. Don't worry about the edges in this point because this will require a different step. Okay. So the first thing you guys want to go ahead and do is you want to put two of the unsolved edges on top. So I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to replace it with and solved edge at the top and one solved edge at the bottom. And so what this will allow us to do is that it will allow us to swap in on these two only. So that's what we're going to do is we're just going to do slicing on these two. So the first thing that we're going to start off with is the very two middle ones right here. These are the, these are the two that we're going to focus on only, just these two. And this is blue. This one right here has a blue one, so we're going to insert it in. And then we're going to pair it together. You can see that they're paired right there. We're just going to replace it with an empty one right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pair this blue and orange one. This one has the blue and orange right there. So we're going to put it in. And we're going to pair it just like that. And then we're going to replace it with one that has an unsolved one like that one. So now we can see we've solved for all of them, but we sometimes get parity. So let me show you what parity looks like at this stage. All right, then let's say we're at this stage right here where we want to flip this one and this one and all the other two, the two other ones are solved already. So we need to flip these two. And how we would do that is we would use this algorithm right here. It will be right here on the screen. And this is how the algorithm is going to go. And so the, what it has done, it has solved this edge and this edge. So that's great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go on to the next layer on top. We're going to go to these two right here now, this one and this one. These are the next two that we're going to solve for. So let's go ahead and do that. Here's a red one and a red one right there. They paired. This one has an empty slot, so we're going to use it. And we're going to pair it. And in turn, we've actually paired that one, so that's good. This one has a green and orange, so I'm going to put it right there because this one has a green and orange, but it's in the wrong side, but this one will go to the right side. So it does match perfectly. I can put this one in there because this one doesn't have any solved edges. Put it in, pair that in there. It has paired this one. So this is a, this is, this one's good to go. So I don't have to worry about that one anymore. 
Um, this one has the red and the blue. This one has the red and the blue. We can put it in right there. Replace it with this one. And then what we have here is, um, we don't actually have parity yet, so that's good. So then we move this right here and then replace it with this one. Then that solves this one and this one. This is solved. This one is also solved. So if you had parity on this one, you would perform the same algorithm as the one before, only this time you would... Um, instead of holding it, instead of moving the middle slice, you would just move this slice only. But you perform the same algorithm. Um, the one that I just showed you, it would be the same one. Instead of grabbing all the centers, uh, all the layers leading up to the center, you would just uh, grab only the first four layers and do the algorithm just like that. So it's the same thing, just grabbing the first four layers. So now we're moving on to this one and this one to solve. So pretty cool enough, we can actually, oh wait, wrong side. So right now we're just solving for the pieces. You guys should already know how to do this. It's very simple. We're slicing in and we're slicing out. We're replacing it. Once we pair things together, we want to replace it with ones that do have an empty spot. That way we can continue to pair together. And we're just doing the same swapping in, swapping out thingy as we've been doing the entire time. Okay, so you can see that we're almost done. We just need to do these last two pieces of the edge, this one and this one. So let's go ahead and solve for them. Once we're done with that, we're done solving all of these pieces, and now we can move on to 3x3 three three stage. So if you guys had parity on either this layer, this layer, this layer, this layer, if you had it in these two, move it with these layers. If it was on the one next to it, this one right here, you move it with these layers, the one next to it, this one, and if it was these very ones, you would just perform the same parity algorithm with these ones right here. So go back to the original one that I did in the beginning, and then just change how many layers you're gripping, but it's the same algorithm. So now we're going to solve for 3x3 three three stage, and you guys should already know how to solve a 3x3. Three three. If you guys do not know how to solve a 3x3, three three, then um, I don't know what you're doing in this video. Um, but yeah, now at this point, we're just solving it like a big 3x3, three three because that's essentially what it has become, just a big old 3x3. Three three.
So we actually don't have parity, but I will show you guys right now what parity looks like on this cube and how to solve it. But right now we're just going to solve it like a big old 3x3. Three three. Do we have... Wow, we don't even have um, PLL parity. We're really lucky on this solve, guys. So sometimes you'll get lucky and you won't get parity, and that's what happens when you you have much less of a chance of getting parity if you did what I told you in the beginning and actually know the color scheme and actually follow it correctly. So that's the best way to solve for parity on cubes like these. You want to keep that in mind when solving these things like that. And just like that, the cube is solved. And you have successfully solved your 10 by 10 Rubik's Cube. So with that being out of the way, let's go ahead and go through PLO and OLA parity and how to solve for them. So holding it like this, the algorithm. So right here we have, this is what an OLA parity should look like on the 10 by 10. And here is how to solve it. You want to perform the algorithm shown on screen and here I'm going to follow along with you. So it's going to be... And that's how you solve for OLL parity. And then you would just continue on and solve it like a 3 by 3 Did I get, and I did get, uh, well, let's see. We have two edges that need to be swapped. This is how you can tell that this is parity. Also, there's one where there's two adjacent edges that need to be swapped just like this. There's a clip of it. I'll show you right here. We have the PLL parity that you can get on this cube, and that's when these two are supposed to be swapped, but everything else in the cube is solved. Okay, so once you have it like that, this is the algorithm that you want to go ahead and use. You want to slice up the first four slices, move them up twice, form a U2. They're going to move them up twice again perform a middle U2 where you grab the middle of this the middle of this cube and do it twice. Then you're going to do another uh, U2 with the four slices and then you're going to do a middle U2 again and that will solve for the PLL parity. So I really hope that this tutorial was helpful for you guys. I know that this is a very long video and it has been very, very long awaited. 11 by 11 tutorial will be coming soon. Kilominx, Master Kilominx will be coming out soon. Um, 12 by 12 and Terramix will also be coming out soon. Those are all going to take a while, so you're going to have to hold up on me on that. I also have a couple of uh, review cube reviews for cubes coming out, so a lot of awesome videos coming out for you guys. And... Um, if you guys had any questions during this video, let me know in the comments. I'll help you guys out. And if I get a lot of frequent questions, I'll make a follow-up video and answer your questions live and show you examples on what the confusion was. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys like this video, be sure to give it a like. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. Let me know anything that you were confused about in the comments below. Until then, I'll see you on the next video. It's Kevin Brown. Peace out, guys.